Hi, I'm Bill Mazza. Nice to meet you. Today we're going to be talking about a th creativity without a computer. Now, for me, it doesn't sound at all strange because that's how we learned. I learned without a computer. Today, without a computer, you can't do anything, it seems. You don't know what to do. Everything is shopping online, delivery, all kinds of amazing things. The digital technologies are, are crazy. But we're going to talk about how to create. Now, the computer really can't create. It's a great tool. And that's what it is. It's a tool. It has to be considered as a tool. So I don't believe that you can create with the computer. You know, it can assist you. As a mechanic, when he has to start turning wrenches, he can do that because he has all the, the, the tools to do it. And the computer is a tool. But how to think creatively has nothing to do with the computer. My father worked at the Pentagon. He was at an MIT guy. And he told me that back in the 80s, 70s, 80s, that, um, you know, he said, a computer can never really replicate the touch of a human hand. The texture, the warmth, what it transmits. It can give you a suggestion with all of the animation and everything, the hand, what it can look like. But it can never really, can, you can't feel the texture of somebody's hand. The warmth, the feeling, the feeling that it gives between two people. That type of thing doesn't come from a computer. That being said, it's really virtually, I feel, a facade to try to learn otherwise. So what I do is I teach creative thinking and how to do it is without a computer. We're not going to put a computer in our class. We're not going to have everybody going on Google and looking at solutions and stuff like that. Forget it. We're going to start really thinking about how to create. And I have my theory of distraction that I use and I teach with creative thinking. It's called imagination which is a method that I use out of random elements. And we start assigning reasoning to those things, analytical reasoning to why things are different. Because my theory predicts this, meaning this. People seem to think that, you know, that uh, you've heard this millions of times, that he's creative, she's more creative, she's not creative. And when they say that, there's reasons to it. But in reality, everybody's creative. They just don't know how to get it out. However, with somebody, everybody's got a lot of stuff going on in their minds. They have to worry about maybe going to school, paying for the college tuition, uh, the house payments here, the car payments are due, and my mother is sick, my daughter is this. And when you tell someone to, and to try to create, get out of the box and find this, what these people do is they start thinking, they close their eyes or whatever they got to do, and all of a sudden they hit the first stop sign, which is, I got to pay the rent. And all of a sudden, boom, it comes back at them. So that one creative thought that you were trying to go find and search outside of the borders, it's, it's kind of hard. And what happens is they say, well, you know, I need more time or I'm not really a creative person. So let me give you this way here. With my theory of distraction, because if you take the same person and that person all of a sudden has to, um, finds out with all these things going on, that his father just died. Boom! He's way out there. His strong sense of focus. Nothing else is important in the world to him at that point. Do you know why? Because of, he was distracted with this. Nothing's important. Now, how do you create that type of distraction with people that are design students and how to design? I do it by submitting these random elements that sort of are shocking at first. I have a series of polyhedral multifaceted dice I roll that suggest very shapes, forms, colors, materials, inspirations, odors, a series of things that are that are pre-designated for the thing that we're going to be creating. And we roll them, we get combinations. And we get these combinations that are so startling, that are so crazy that you have a focus. And that's how, how I teach. Strong sense of distraction and focus. Then with these random elements that come out, then we try to assign analytical reasons. We take a close look at them and we try to understand, well, maybe that's not all that bad. Let me think, why would that couch be yellow and made out of cast iron? Why would it, why? Well, maybe because, and, and we start assigning reasoning to it, and we think about it. So these are conceptual, these are starting points that I use to get the mind creative. And you know what? There is no computer there. 
There's nothing. It's only the mind. Again, this is how creative thinking is taught. This is how it should be taught. And with my methodology, you can learn it. Once you finally get the idea going, and we want to do this, then we can call our friend, the computer, to come in. He can, at that point, come in. We can sit down, and we can have a conversation, and we can start building. It's a tool. That's what it is. Artificial intelligence, that we're hearing this wonderful word that's fascinating. If you take a close look at the world, it's artificial. That's a big, big, big thing to look at. No one looks at it. I, I don't know how many people really realize that it's fake. It's not real. Again, let's get back to the hand, the touch of the hand, the warmth, the feeling that it gives. Kids these days, I shouldn't say it, not a generalization, but I have to make some sort of a point. But, you know, they're always out there on their phones and everything is thing and messages in here and quick and that. And the, but then again, they want to go home for Christmas or Thanksgiving and sit down with the turkey. And they remember certain things that were going on. The warmth of a family, the warmth of these types of things are so vitally important. And when we say, let's start, you know, create with the computer, how is that going to happen? Are we going to be sitting down at a table with a bunch of computers with the turkey? Doesn't make much sense, does it? But anyway, so to make a very long story short, and I can go on for hours and hours and hours about, uh, you know, the importance of learning without a computer. When I go into the club, when I have my classes, everybody that's got a thing called an iPhone, they put in the basket, they leave them there. When they get up on their break, they can come and pick up their phone and go out and talk to their boyfriend or girlfriend or what they got to do. You can't, you can't be distracted. But these things here are distractions. And they're a distraction of tools. And they become things that, you know, that really aren't uh, helping us in the creative process. So, that being said, I want to thank you very much. I welcome you to, to discuss this, to talk about it, and also to sign up some of my courses. And you'd be surprised what will happen. Thank you very much.